I am uh, chatting with Kimberly Kane, President and CEO of Kane Communications Group. Um, Kimberly, thank you very much for spending time with me. I know this is a very busy time for you, so I appreciate taking the time. We'll always make time for you, Beth. Oh, that's here. Kind of I appreciate that. Thank you. All right, so Kimberly, we're talking about leadership during times of crisis and challenge yeah. and um, how leaders are having to evolve and sort of um, new things that they're embracing and also just how are you keeping your own positive mindset up so that you can lead and be there for others. So my first question to you is, how did you wake up this morning? What was your own mental state of mind? And has that been evolving and changing much since we've all been now uh, staying at home? Yeah, you know, I, um, I always wake up positive and excited about the day. Um, I think I've always been that way. Um, you know, when you're a leader, when you run a company, when you're a parent, there is always so much stress on your shoulders, right? And um, I think we just have to expect that and we have to accept it. And I always find that I'm most productive um, and able to empower the people around me when I go into the day with a positive mindset, um, no matter what the challenges are. Um, I think when you're a leader, you always have to be ready to solve problems. Um, and it's much harder to do that when you're angry or you're stressed um, or you don't have a positive attitude. So that's the approach I try to take every day. Yeah, I love it. So that hasn't really changed for you. You, re you, really, you really lean into your role as a leader. But, yeah. but on an ongoing basis, do you have any tips or techniques that you do so you can wake up every morning with a positive mindset? What are your own personal habits that help with that? Yeah. Well, I think one of the most important things to do is to find joy every day, no matter how difficult the day is, no matter how stressful the day is. Um, I think, you know, there are, are lots of memes, right, that are going around right now um, because of the difficult situation that we're in with COVID-19. And some of them are ridiculous, but you really have to laugh at them. I mean, I enjoy it when people share those with me because you have to press pause and, and laugh a little bit. Um, you know, I also happen to have my four children home with me. So two of them are home from college and there's a new set of chaos. Um, I think that they have brought with them, you know, having a 19 year old and a 22 year old back at home. And so I think as life throws kind of new challenges your way, you have to try to find kind of the positives in all of those things uh, just to keep going. So finding joy every day, you know, finding some positives in chaos. I think also Beth being really organized. So the night before I really try to put together a good list of what I need to get done the next day. So no matter how tired I am the night before, I know that if I'm not pretty organized going into the day the next morning, it's going to be harder for me to prioritize my time. And it's also harder to take a break. So as human beings, we need to give ourselves a chance to just step away from the computer and press pause. So I like to try to schedule that time in um, and take a break. And getting outside. Uh, the other thing that I think is important for all of us to do is get outside, um, take a walk, you know, even if the weather's bad, yeah. to get fresh air. So we've scheduled that into the day as well. Yeah, I like that. I think sometimes we have to schedule it in order to do it. Like I think intellectually, you know it's important, but we never get around to it. So I love the fact that you actually are scheduling it to make sure that that, that, that happens. Yeah. Um, so Kimberly, give me like maybe one or two examples of how you might be leading a little bit differently during this time, right? So things have changed, right? Um, we don't have all the answers in terms of what the future holds. People are working remotely. What have you done differently or how are you leading differently um, because of the circumstances around you? Yeah. Well, I'll go back to um, March 17th. So it was a Monday or a Tuesday. And that was the day when our clients really started bringing us in to help them full force with um, COVID-19 communications. And um, leading up to that, I think the team had been looking around and thinking about how is this going to affect me? We're still really focused on client service and making sure that we're doing all the things we need to do for our clients. But over the course of those two days, the attitude and the energy of my team shifted and Beth, they were afraid. I was getting text messages saying, should we be working remote? Should we even be here? Um, and when I looked at my employees, there was fear in their eyes. 
And this was a crossroads I had never expected I would be at as a leader, where I was in a position where, you know, I'm so used to being in charge and feeling like I have some control. But in that moment, what was best for the business was not what was most important. What was best for my employees and my team was what was most important. And since that time, we have all been working remotely and that's had to stay top of mind for me. Yeah, productivity is critical. Making sure we're staying in touch with our clients and meeting objectives is critical. But every day I make it a point to reach out to them and say, how are you doing? How's your family? Are you staying safe? So I think that's been one of the biggest changes for me as a leader yeah. is to make sure that um, I'm keeping the true health and well-being of my employees top of mind uh, every day. Yeah. Do you envision that that is something that you will continue if when we go back to normal? Yeah. yeah. You're, you're finding value in that, that that's something that you'll continue? Absolutely. Yeah, I, I really love it. And it's really brought the team together uh, a lot closer. Um, what's interesting is I think working remotely has increased the trust among our team members. Mm. Because we can't see each other. Mm -hmm. um, we can't track each other down physically. We have to rely on each other in a remote setting. So I think it's improved the communication across the team. Um, and I think it's, it's really improved trust. It's absolutely taken our relationships with each other to a different level, which is neat. Um, you know, that's really sure, yeah, I'm not sure how that's going to translate when we get back into the office. You know, it's funny, I was um, uh, putting together an employee engagement survey. So looking at developing an employee engagement program before this you know, COVID-19 issue hit, I think that's going to look different. Um, when we get back together. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, it's really fascinating because I think people are really stepping up leaders and employees in different ways because we have to. Yeah. And some of that is a silver lining because there are things that we probably should have been doing and should absolutely try to continue. So I think I agree with you. The trick will be, can we continue it? <laughs> you know, right. when things sort of go back to normal, because some of these things are really good things like the compassion, the, the, the care, the empathy, the mm -hmm. trust. You know, all those things are, I think people really appreciate it now. Right. We'll appreciate it after we keep doing it. I think that'll be the challenge. That's such a great point. You know, how do we not take some of these really important lessons for granted when we get back um, into the swing of things, if you will? Yeah. Um, so I think that's something that I am definitely going to be thinking about. Yeah. All right. Well, I, I would love to have a conversation with you again, sort of like post all this coronavirus crisis to see yeah. how um, you're still embracing some of those things. So Kimberly, before we sign off, I really want you to share a little bit about some really important work that you're kicking off uh, on behalf of Milwaukee County called right. Stay Home MKE, the campaign. Tell us, what is that? Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Beth, for giving me the opportunity to talk about it and for your involvement uh, in the campaign as well. Um, and I hope we get to talk about that just a little bit too. Um, so Stay Home MKE is a public information campaign that we're just beginning to get off the ground uh, here in Milwaukee. And it was really born from the input of public health um, and health system leaders and public safety leaders from across the 19 municipalities here in Milwaukee County, who said, you know, listen, we have this safer at home order that's come down now from the governor. We know that staying at home and being compliant with what all of the health experts say we need to do is, is the way we're gonna to begin to flatten the curve and save lives here in Milwaukee. But how do we enforce that? How do we get people to actually embrace that and, and do it? Because we don't want to enforce it from a law enforcement perspective. And it became clear that um, a very proactive messaging and public information campaign was the way to go. So Stay Home MKE was born from that effort. We now have uh, a website. We'll have PSAs that are running. We'll start working with the media to talk about this. And really the message is we can all do our part. Every one of us can do our part to stay home and, and keep people in our community safe. We know we have essential workers who are out on the front lines. We have law enforcement, we have nurses and physicians, we have public health practitioners who don't have that option. We have individuals we rely on when we go to the grocery store and the gas stations and other places who don't have that option. So how can each one of us who does have that option protect them 
and protect our families by reducing the spread of COVID-19. And that's by staying at home. Yeah. Each one of us can do our part. You know, I really like that because it does give everyone a sense of feeling empowered when everything else around us is out of our control, right? Like that is one thing that everyone can do to contribute um, in a meaningful way because it actually does make a difference. And I struggled with that with the, when the first, you know, stay at home order came, right? I've got three teenage kids who want to go out and right. they're sort of of the mindset, like we're young, we're healthy. Yeah. Yeah. And you feel kind of bad. I'm like, well, I don't know. Are other parents letting their kids go right. out? I, my parents are 85, so I was really trying to be protective of them, but they still want to go and do their routine. So yeah. I have been kind of struggling over the past couple of weeks of how do we all do this together and take that accountability. So I feel like the campaign will only help me because then I won't feel like I'm just one mom in one right. house trying to make these decisions by myself. I can feel like, no, I'm part of something and we can all play our part together. So it's kind of empowering from that standpoint. So I love it. I'm yeah. super excited to help spread the word. So yeah. Well, and you're going to be working with us as an influencer. So yeah. that's really exciting, Beth. Um, really, you'll have the chance to share your story. And, you know, I think we all have trusted people in our networks, right? And you've got such a phenomenal network. And, you know, those are the people that each one of us can turn to and say, hey, did you know about Stay Home MKE? And why don't you join me in this? Because we can all do this. It's ironic. We're all going to do this together, right, by staying at home. Yeah. So it's a huge collaborative. I hope there's a lot of pride that everyone, you know, develops as they get involved with this. Yeah. Let's champion this message. Stay home. Uh, stay safe. Save lives. In Milwaukee, we can do this together. Yeah. I love it. I think that's a great place to end on a very positive note. And Kimberly, thank you very much for your, for your leadership and this big effort for the community and sharing some of your tips and your practices to do that with us today. So thank you. Absolutely, Beth. Great to work with you. And thanks so much for uh, the time to have this conversation.